Let's talk bell peppers. Also known as sweet peppers or capsicums, bell peppers come in a rainbow of beautiful colors. They can be eaten raw or cooked and are rich in vitamin C and other antioxidants. Bell peppers are a tasty, healthy snack and make a great addition to a variety of dishes. Before we get started, let's learn a little bit about bell peppers. Hardening off. The process of gradually adapting plants to the outdoors, getting them used to factors like sun exposure, different temperatures, and wind. This starts by putting seedlings outside for a few hours per day, gradually reducing irrigation and temperature until it's time to transplant. Thinning, a process that reduces competition for light, water, and nutrients between seedlings. You can remove certain seedlings, leaving the strongest plants behind. The ones that are left will have more room to develop, plus a healthier airflow. Crowded plants are also harder to treat for diseases and pests, so thinning can help to manage these problems. Open pollinated, the ability of a pepper to either pollinate itself or to get pollinated by wind, insects, or by human hand. This process is necessary for pepper plants to form flowers. Pruning, a gardening practice that promotes healthy plant growth. Growing tips get pinched back, which encourages the plant to develop new leaves and continue growing. Depending on the color you're after, there are a few different varieties for you to choose from. Bellboy. They have a sweet taste and thick flesh fruit that mature from green to red. King Arthur. Square fruits that mature from green to red. Banana Supreme. This variety has good disease resistance and matures to yellow first, then to red. Lady Bell. The variety has green fruits that mature to red. Chocolate Bell. Smoky flavored fruits that mature to tan brown or red. Purple Beauty. This pepper is ready for eating once it matures to a dark purple color, typically in about 70 to 80 days. Keep in mind that the optimal temperature for germination is between 75 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 to 32 degrees Celsius. Peppers won't germinate at soil temperatures below 55 degrees Fahrenheit, 12.7 degrees Celsius. You'll want to start your plants inside about 8 to 10 weeks before transplanting. Sow your seeds a quarter inch, 0.6 centimeters deep in starter pods, trays, or cell packs. Pepper seedlings need a sunny location in order to start growing. A lack of light means your transplants will be unproductive. Once they've sprouted, you'll still want to also keep your seedlings in a warm and sunny place, like on a windowsill. Air temperature shouldn't fall below 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius during the day, nor should it fall below 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius during the night. It's important to note that you don't want to rush to transplant outside. Bell peppers prefer warm climates, as cold temperatures can weaken the plant. It's best to be patient and wait until the weather is just right. Once it's time, set your transplants 12 to 24 inches, 30 to 60 centimeters apart, in rows that are 24 to 36 inches, 60 to 91 centimeters apart. If you're using raised beds, you can set them 14 to 16 inches, 35 to 40 centimeters apart. You can also start your seeds by directly sowing them outside. If you choose this method, keep in mind that the soil has to be warmed to at least 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 degrees Celsius, and 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius would be even better. Plant your seeds a half inch, 1.2 centimeters deep, and space them 18 inches, 45 centimeters apart. When your pepper plants have two leaves, thin them to the strongest plant. We'll tell you everything you need to know, how to water your peppers, fertilizer and mulching best practices, how to companion plant, and your options for growing structures. Peppers need full sun for optimal growth, and they won't survive cold temperatures. Nighttime temperatures below 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius, or above 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius, can actually lower the amount of fruit they produce. Their ideal air temperature falls between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 and 26 degrees Celsius during the day, 
and 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 to 21 degrees Celsius during the night. You'll want to pinch back the growing tips of your pepper plant, which encourages leaf growth. These leaves provide shade for the fruits in hot summer and help peppers avoid sun scale. Plants can drop their blossoms when air temperatures exceed 95 degrees Fahrenheit, 35 degrees Celsius, or also when they're not watered frequently enough. When it comes to watering, it's best to do so early in the day, so your peppers have enough time to dry off. That will help prevent any diseases from festering. As well, you'll want to pull out any weeds by hand, as they'll compete for nutrients and water around your peppers. Just take care not to damage your plants when doing so. Fertilizer and or mulching. Add a layer of mulch after your plants are well established and the soil has warmed up. If you mulch too early, it can actually keep the cold in the soil longer, which isn't good for peppers. You can use materials like straw, newspapers, or wood chips. As well, prepare your soil before planting with four to six cups of all-purpose fertilizer per 100 square feet, nine meters square. You can also use two to four inches, five to 10 centimeters of well-composted organic matter per 100 square feet. You'll want to side dress your peppers with nitrogen, both four and eight weeks after you've transplanted them. To do so, simply apply a quarter tablespoon per plant, about six inches, 15.2 centimeters next to them, and then water it into the soil. Over fertilizing will encourage excessive leaf growth, but it delays fruit production just keep this in mind when fertilizing. Transplanting best practices. Peppers need eight to 10 weeks to become fit for transplanting and should have six to nine mature leaves as well as a well-developed root system before they go into your garden. Before transplanting, be sure to harden off your seedlings by exposing them to temperatures between 60 and 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 15 and 18 degrees Celsius and also by reducing their water intake. Place your plants outdoors in the sun for a few hours per day, increasing the hours gradually over the span of one to two weeks. Companion plants do's and don'ts. Do's, asparagus, carrots, cucumbers, oregano, parsley, squash, and Swiss chard are all great companions for peppers. Basil is another great option because they help repel aphids. Since eggplants require similar maintenance to your peppers, they also make a good growing companion. Finally, garlic naturally deters insects and fungi, which is a big help for your peppers. Don'ts. Beans create an excess supply of nitrogen, which can stunt the growth of your peppers. Brassicas, like broccoli, cabbage, and cauliflower, have different soil requirements and fertilizer needs, so they aren't great companions. Fennel also attracts pests and insects that are harmful to peppers, so keep them separated. Growing structure options. Staking for tall varieties. When lightly twined to stake or wire cages, pepper plants will grow along with them. This not only prevents them from snapping when their heavy pepper fruits develop, but it also saves garden space. Horizontal growth promotes air circulation around your plants, reducing their risk for diseases. Containers. Containers and pots will work well if they're large enough to accommodate the whole plant. Typically, you'll need ones about 14 inches in diameter per plant. Your containers will also need holes in the bottom for ample soil drainage. Raised beds. Raised beds are ideal for improving your soil's drainage. They also have a higher soil temperature than the actual ground, which is something your peppers will love. Higher soil temps will help prevent the spread of certain diseases that favor cool and or moist conditions, and also means you can get started earlier. Raised beds minimize the disturbance of your plants, since you don't have to step on the soil to work on them. Open field. If you have enough space, Directly planting into an open field is another great option. It's critical that the soil is well warmed before planting your seeds or transplants. When growing in an open field, you can also install support structures like wooden stakes or wire cages. Potential pests and their solutions. 
aphids. These tiny pests come in a variety of colors, green, black, red, light orange, or yellow, and mainly feed on the undersides of leaves and stems. What they're actually feeding on is the sap in plants, which ends up causing the plants damage. Aphids also leave behind a sticky substance called honeydew, and they are a pest that's known to spread diseases. Aphids can be tolerated by most plants when their numbers are low, but if there's a lot of aphids, they can stunt a plant's growth and cause a plant's leaves to turn yellow and fall off. Here's what to do. For the most part, plants can handle mild aphid infestations, but if they're found, a strong jet of water from a garden hose will wash them off the plants. Spraying plants with water should be done early in the morning so that the plants can dry off during the day. Sticky traps, neem oil, insecticidal soaps, and horticultural oils are also effective against aphids. Just be sure to follow the application instructions on the packaging. Oftentimes, you can also get rid of aphids by wiping or spraying the leaves with a mild solution of water and a few drops of dish soap. One variation includes adding a pinch of cayenne pepper. Soapy water should be reapplied every two to three days for about two weeks. As well, you can try to attract beneficial insects like lady beetles, hoverflies, and lacewings, all of which are important aphid predators. Make sure to check all transplants for aphids before planting. And keep in mind that aphids aren't very mobile, so it's not uncommon to find one heavily affected plant surrounded by plants that are fine. If this is the case, simply remove and destroy the infected plant. European Corn Borer When these larvae enter peppers, they leave brown masses on the surface. This damage can also become a gateway for bacterial soft rot, which will typically infect peppers two to three weeks later. Here's what to do. When there's an infestation of these pests, be sure to remove and destroy any affected plants. It's also possible to hand pick single borers if they're found on any plants. Pepper maggots. The adult flies will lay their eggs inside the peppers, which usually means the damage goes unseen until it's too late. The maggots will feed on the inside and leave tunnels behind, which are only really noticed once the pepper either ripens prematurely or dies off. Here's what to do. Use yellow sticky cards to attract and catch the adult flies before they get the chance to lay their eggs. Potential Diseases and Their Solutions Anthracnose Small water-soaked spots will appear on a plant's leaves, and eventually those spots will get bigger and turn tan or brown in color with a papery texture. This disease thrives in extremely wet weather, and its spores are usually spread by splashing water. It can grow on any part of a plant, except for on the plant's roots. Here's what to do. Plant disease-resistant seeds when possible and practice good crop rotation. In general, a three-year rotation is a good place to start. As well, avoid using sprinklers or overhead irrigation and water plants from their base to keep leaves as dry as possible. As well, seeds can be treated with hot water prior to planting, 122 degrees Fahrenheit or 50 degrees Celsius for 25 minutes. If anthracnose is found on any plants, make sure to destroy and compost the crop residue after harvest. As well, make sure to follow recommended spacing guidelines, since air circulation and ventilation is important for avoiding a lot of diseases. Finally, when planting in containers, it's important to sterilize those containers before use. Blossom End Rot when plants are affected with this disease, light brown spots will first appear at the bottom of the fruit, and those fruits will often get invaded by another black mold. As the fruit grows, the spots grow bigger, turning into dark, leathery lesions that are sunken into the fruit. Here's what to do. 
maintain consistent watering, and keep the soil evenly moist. Also, add mulch to help the plants retain water. Straw or black plastic will do the trick. Excess nitrogen also causes blossom end rot on crops because the excess nitrogen blocks the absorption of calcium. As a result, it's best to avoid high nitrogen fertilizers as well as ammonia fertilizers, like fresh manure. If a plant is already showing signs of end rot in the plant's early fruiting phase, calcium may need to be added into the soil. Keep in mind, though, that calcium isn't taken in well by the leaves, so avoid using a foliar spray. Calcium needs to go directly to the roots, so calcium carbonate tablets, or anti-acid tablets like Tums, can be placed into the soil at the base of the plant. Bacterial leaf spot. It causes dark, sunken, and scab-like lesions to form on plants. Old spots might then turn a light brown color with purple edges. Most common in coastal regions, this disease thrives in temperatures between 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 26 to 32 degrees Celsius, and it can appear after a heavy rainfall. Bacterial leaf spot is then spread by splashing rain, workers, tools, and machinery. Here's what to do. Practice garden sanitation and keep growing areas free of weeds. Rotating crops is also important in managing this disease. And when possible, plant certified disease-resistant seeds. Finally, avoid overhead watering to keep plants safe from bacterial leaf spot. Cucumber mosaic virus. This virus causes ring spots and weird patterns to appear on the leaves of an affected plant. Those leaves will also become small, curled, and malformed. As well, leaves typically become dull gray and leathery. An early infection will affect the fruits in their size, shape, and overall quality. Here's what to do. Remove and destroy infected plants and control any aphid pests, since aphids spread the virus. Also, be sure to get rid of perennial weeds, like milkweed, marsh cress, and yellow rocket. Just make sure to wash your hands after touching any infected plants. Finally, Pacer, Market More 76, Slice Master, Dasher 2, Space Master, and Sweet Success are all varieties that are resistant to this disease. Phytophthora blight. This disease causes the roots, stems, and fruits of pepper plants to rot. Distinctive black lesions will form on the stem, and the fruit and stems will then wilt. This disease is spread by water, and it typically starts in areas that don't drain well. It can also be spread through infected soil that's stuck to humans or machinery. Here's what to do. Rotate peppers with non-hosts, like corn, small grains, brassicas, and alliums. As well, practice good field sanitation, avoid overwatering, and keep the soil from compacting. It also helps to improve the soil's drainage and to avoid working in the garden when plants are wet. Soft rot. Water-soaked lesions will spread rapidly and cause the fruits of a plant to deteriorate into a slimy, foul-smelling mass. These lesions are soft, sunken, and brown in color. Soft rot typically thrives in warm and moist weather, invading plants through other injuries caused by insect stings, sun scald, or wounding. This disease is usually spread by human activity and the movement of soil, usually becoming a problem when soil has been water-soaked for a long period of time. Here's what to do. Avoid soft rot by planting crops in well-drained soil, allowing the soil to dry in between watering. Make sure crops are planted in the appropriate depth, because when some crops are planted too deep, it increases the severity of the soft rot disease. As well, try not to throw soil onto plants while cultivating, avoid excess irrigation, and take care not to wound any plants. It's also important not to harvest crops during rainy periods, and it's best not to work in the garden when crops are wet. 
Finally, practice proper tool and hand sanitation, and be sure to remove any decayed plants, because the diseased plants can affect healthy ones as well. Tobacco Mosaic Virus This disease causes the uneven ripening of peppers, as well as light and dark green spots that will appear on the leaves of affected plants. Those leaves will also be smaller and more curled in appearance. When plants become infected at an early stage, the plant's growth gets stunted. It's important to note too that this virus can actually be transmitted by the hands of a smoker, since it lives on tobacco. Here's what to do. Plant disease-resistant varieties when possible. If there is an infection already, make sure to get rid of any affected plants while also practicing proper garden sanitation. Smokers should wash their hands, as well as any clothes that have been covered in smoke to prevent spreading it to the pepper plants. Tomato Spotted Wilt Virus Affected peppers will have small black lesions, while the stems and roots of the plant might have black streaks. Severely infected plants can wilt, and the plant's growth becomes stunted. Here's what to do. Remove and destroy any infected plants. As well, remove weeds that might be hosts for the virus to spread over to pepper plants. Verticulum wilt. A disease causing the yellowing and wilting of lower leaves. Also, V-shaped brown lesions will appear and the plant's roots and stems will also turn brown. Infected leaves wilt, dry out, and eventually die, while the stems of plants might also turn black near the soil line. In general, verticulum wilt can cause the wilting, stunting, or even the death of plants entirely. The disease is typically spread between plants when infected plant material is physically moved from one spot to another. Here's what to do. Plant high-quality disease-free seeds and avoid planting in areas that were previously infected with verticulum wilt. It's also important to practice crop rotation with non-vulnerable plants. In general, a three-year crop rotation is a good place to start. As well, make sure plants have enough space in between, since air circulation and ventilation is very important for avoiding disease. Do not over-fertilize or over-water plants. And when watering is done, it's best to do so in the morning to give plants time to dry off during the day. Also, sterilize any containers before use. When there are plants infected with verticulum wilt, be sure to remove and destroy the plants and also destroy the surrounding soil. It's also important to control weeds around the crops. Water crops regularly. And when possible, provide crops with some afternoon shade. The verticulum wilt fungus can also be rid from the soil by using the solarization process. Simply cover the soil with a tarp, which will heat up the top six inches, 15 centimeters of soil, enough to kill the fungus. Harvesting. Pick your peppers as they mature, which will help to promote continuous regrowth, aka more tasty bell peppers for you to enjoy. Peppers are typically ready to harvest when they are firm to the touch. However, their sweetness and vitamin C levels will increase as the fruit color intensifies. Make sure to never leave overripe or rotting fruits on the plant because they can degrade the surrounding peppers. As well, cutting peppers off instead of pulling them will cause less damage to the plant. Storing. Your peppers will store for about a week in the refrigerator. If you're working with a smaller batch of peppers, you can also try pickling them 